ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد today we are going to start our khutbah with a very important question how do we get to know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a question that many of us are guilty of not having a very solid answer for including myself allah jalla jalalu said in his holy book walillahi al-asma'u al-husna fad'uhu biha to allah belongs his names al-asma' al-husna so call him by it and from what we know from the authentic hadith from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he also told us told us that for the word ad dua there is a meaning which is also al ibadah when he recited the ayah wa qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum the prophet said after that ad dua huwa al ibadah so we learned from this that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that knowing the names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an act of worship and we have to learn about this and we have to learn about the attributes that he associated uh, that he associated with himself and told us to know about them what is very important to know as well is that we can never be complete in our knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum wa la yuhaytuna bihi ilma he knows what is between their hands and what is behind them and they do not encompass him with knowledge wa la yuhaytuna bihi ilma al ihata is surrounding a matter from all of its sides and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying is that we cannot surround him in knowledge fully he surrounds all matters in knowledge he encompasses everything with his with his with his knowledge so we know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al alim but our topic today my dear brothers and sisters is not about ismullah al alim it is actually a topic that connects three other names al rahim al hakim and al adl al rahim which is the most merciful al hakim the most wise or the wise and al adl the justice it is indeed well known for every muslim that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need humans whereas we the humans his worshipers we are in need of him and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we are al fuqara wa huwa al ghani allah huwa al ghani wa nahnu al fuqara ilay this means that that al ghani in arabic means the one who does not have needs al faqir whoever has a need so as long as we are on earth in this life every single one of us is in need for something no matter what it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who is al ghani so in the matter of needs in understanding what the human needs are the scholars muslims and not muslims have agreed on three major categories that they described human needs in the first one is the body the second one the mind and the third one the spirit as for your body needs you, we all know that your body needs to be taken care of 
and to be fed and to be maintained and healthy. So what we do is we do that by eating, by drinking, by sleeping, drinking water obviously, by doing exercises and so on. And the mind isn't any different. It also has needs. And we see that with what we know as knowledge. Through every phase of our lives from the very beginning our minds relies on knowledge in order for us to do any action. From when you start learning how to take a step, from when you learn how to read, from when you learn how to write, every phase of your life requires knowledge. You need knowledge. And for the third one, it is the spirit or the soul. We say that at the end always, but it is actually not the least important one. It is actually the one that we neglect the most and we have the least knowledge of, unfortunately. But it is very important. It is very important as what feeds the soul and what feeds the spirit is Iman, is connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the salah. So these things, once we learn what they exactly feed and once they learn what need they uh, fulfill, inshallah we will have a very better understanding of ourselves and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will pause here and continue in the second khutbah, insha'Allah, to tell you the connection between these needs that we have just mentioned and the three names of Allah that we talked about at the very beginning. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ فَيَا فَوْزًا مُسْتَغْفِرِينَ الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد The connection between the needs that we talked about and our topic is understanding what these needs cause which is simply pain These needs cause pain Every need from the previous list of needs causes a pain or a fear, one of the two. So we'll take an example. Your body needs water. Your throat starts hurting, so you feel pain. Or if you don't drink water, what happens is that you get dehydrated, which is also causes you pain. Another example, when your body needs to be fed, what happens is you start getting hungry, your stomach hurts, and you feel pain. So your pain drives you, to know, drives you to know your need. And so on, you can take this on any matter, any need, you will find that behind every single one of it, there is a pain. So, we also say that we work because of a fear. And we study because of a fear, and we exercise because of a fear. These list of things, they are actions. And we say that they are motivated by fears and pain by these specific examples. I'll tell you right now. So, we work because we fear if we don't work, we won't have something to eat. And we study because we fear if we don't study, we won't have a job and live. And we fear if we don't exercise, we won't have a healthy body to live with. So every single action, in fact, has behind it a motivator that is either a pain or a fear of pain. This very point is what a lot of us fail to realize and fail to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the fact that he allows us to feel this pain. From, from here, comes our mention to the name that we said at the beginning, Ar-Rahim. Because the pain that we feel, the pain that every one of us feel, is in fact a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it had been taken away from every single one of us, our lives would have been a thousand times more difficult. And why do I know this for a fact? You can see for yourself and do the research for people who have disorders of not feeling the sensory pain. It's called CIP disorder. 
their lives, may Allah help them, it is very difficult. Very difficult. So, this is not the pain, what we have just talked about, is not the pain that we have a problem with. We, we at some point, we accept it and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it, but there is a, a, a type of pain that we don't like, that we don't accept. The, the, uh, the, I call it the bad pain, or the unjustified pain, or quote unquote, evil. This is what we, or a lot of us, fail to accept. The question that comes to many minds is, couldn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have made this life with no killing, no murders, no oppression, no poverty? And the answer is, indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have done that. But that would defy the purpose of our existence. The, pur the purpose of why we are here on earth. And the fact that we have the choice to make an action towards either doing the good or doing the bad is what puts us here on earth. So we must have a choice. We must have a choice for this test to go through. We must have the ability to do good or to do evil in order to be judged. I always like to give the example of an online school test. You log on to do the test and you find that it is all multiple choice questions, beginning to end. You start by the first question, you try to select the wrong answer, it doesn't let you select it. You click on the another wrong choice, it doesn't let you select it. And you only can select the correct answer. You go on to the next question and the next question, it is all the same. You only select the right answer. Would this be a fair test? Of course, no logical human being can say yes. It is indeed an unfair test. It is actually an unwise test. An unwise test to let people only do what is right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to make our choices, to either do good or do bad. And from there comes the second name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we mentioned at the beginning, Al-Hakim. That he did not miss a single detail in our life in how he put us on earth, but he took into accountability and made sure that this test on earth is a fair test, is a wise test that covers everything. And it is part of his justice that he made a hereafter, a day of judgment, that we will be tested, that we will be judged on everything that we did in this life for. So understanding all of this, my dear brothers and sisters, is or understanding this full picture is integral for us to live at a peace of mind. Very important. Very important for us to live tranquil and with, you know, peace with ourselves and peace with our reality. As you know, there are people that decide to take away their lives because they couldn't wrap their minds around why so many bad things happen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us something very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلُ أَنْ, نب... من قبل أن نَبْرَأَهَا إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٍ No tragedy that comes upon you on earth or in your souls, in our nafs, except that it is in a book except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it and He has written it before He allows it to happen. Which tells us something very important. When you think about why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us this, you can read the very next ayah, which says, لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ So He is telling us this so that we don't get sad from what comes upon us. So that we are, we know that we are destined to be at this very point. We are destined to have whatever has happened to us happen. We are destined for it for a lot of reasons. It could be, it could be a test for your patience. It could be a nudge for you to realize and go in the right direction. It could be to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because people when they feel tragedies, they remember Allah. 
Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever it is, your pain isn't for nothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are content with his decree. Whether we see it good or we see it bad. May Allah give us all wisdom to keep the full picture and purpose in our mind and make us act upon it. And O oh Allah, teach us what benefits us from your names and from your holy book, the Quran, and from the method of your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى فيه بملائكته فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا مولانا قريب سميع مجيب الدعوات وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة